Hi. On October 17, 1941, Oklahoma City University was visiting Youngstown College in a football game. The first penalty flag was utilized in that football game, and it happened right on this field behind me. What I'm going to do is walk over there. I can't get down on the field. I tried. All the gates are secured, so I'm going to do the best I can to give you a view of the field. But on this field right here that I'm about to show you is where the first penalty flag was utilized by referees. Let's take a walk over there. Our, our legendary coach at the time, Dwight Dyke Beatty, was coaching on the field, but before the game, let's get let's go back a little bit. His wife was having an issue with the way they were calling penalties. Back then, it was just a horn signal that rarely could be heard by the spectators in the stands. So she sat down with her husband, Dwight, and they came up with the idea of using a flag, something that could be seen by the spectators and not heard so that they would understand what was going on. And Dwight and his wife, Irma, came up with the idea of using a red and white 16 inches square with a weight at the end. And this is the field where it was first utilized. This is Youngstown Rand High School Stadium. Back then, Youngstown College used this as their home field. But this is the field where the first penalty flag was thrown by the referees. Back then, there was four referees for that game. It was Hugh McPhee, Jack McPhee, Bill Renner, and Carl Rebel. What happened was Irma Beatty, like I said, came up with the idea with her husband, and she actually sewed the first flags. It was red with white stripes, and what they did is they used their daughter's old Halloween costume for the red striping and an old sheet from their house as the white striping. And she, what she had did, she came up with the idea of putting weight at one of the ends. What she did is she went to uh, Dwight Beatty's fishing tackle box and grabbed a couple lead sinkers and used it and sewed it at the one end of the penalty flag to use as weight so when the referees would throw it, you know, it wouldn't fly away, it's kind of windy today. You know, it would just go right to the ground and the spectators would know that a penalty had been called. Again, it was 16 inches square with the weight all at one end. But this is the field right here. Youngstown Rand High School Stadium. Them goalposts look pretty old, so I don't know if they were the original ones or not, but this is the field that they used. Back here is where the Rand High School used to sit. I don't know if that's too blurry for you or not, but try to get a good view of it. Again, I wish I could get in, but I can't. This is the field that they used. What had happened is one of the referees, a Jack McPhee, he later used it at an Ohio State-Iowa game. And the Big Ten commissioner was actually a spectator at that game and was impressed with the idea of the penalty flag and they began using it in the Big Ten. It was actually used at the first Rose Bowl in 1948 in front of 100,000 fans, and they were also impressed. All the fans were wondering what was going on with this penalty flag being thrown, and then when they were told you know, what was occurring, they were very, very impressed with it, and it stuck. So from 1948 on, it was utilized by all the colleges, and then it became a uh, staple with the pros. But the first one ever used was right here on this field by Youngstown College against Oklahoma City University, October 17, 1941. Again, you can take the boy out of Youngstown, but you can't take Youngstown out of the boy. The history of the penalty flag goes all the way back to Youngstown, Ohio. Thank you, and I will talk to you again.